Hi everyone and welcome to 36 of my 36 day of my 40 till 40. Um, I'm at home. I'm chilling. No makeup. I ain't do my hair today. That's okay. I'm still cute. <laughs> um, and I wanted to, I had a little time. I wanted to bring you a video um, based on some things I've been hearing and receiving from people uh, regarding expats in different countries, but I'm gonna speak from Mexico. So, um, some of the articles and some of the things I've heard are having to do with this kind of doing the same thing that happens to black people in America, which is gentrification. Um, I've talked to you about privilege and being humble. I think I've talked to you all about that. But that, you know, when we go to other countries, we are considered expats. Uh, but when other people go to America, they're immigrants. And that, you know, there's negative connotations that come along with immigrant versus a positive connotation for um, what comes along with uh, expat. Also that the immigrant comes and builds and helps to build the economy, build up the community and things like that. Uh, immigrants do that, you know, improve things when they come. Where it's, you know, expats are coming to, for, for their own benefit, to, to extract. Um, they're not building the current uh, community. Um, many expats talk about building the economy uh, by bringing their dollars and spending their dollars and things like that. But uh, as far as building community, and I, I take issue with that as well. And so I just want to bring you some uh, advice and information about, you know, how you can be a gracious um, expat, I've heard immigrants, um, or whatever you want to call yourself, you know, and, and even just the different words we use to describe ourselves, you know, um, have I expatriated from America? In my heart, I have. Um, have I done that on paper? Um, no. I still, um, as some people know, I still believe that my ancestors built America and that they invested some things and I want my return. And so I am um, not going to give up things that my ancestors um, died for. Um, and I am gonna get the return on investment. So I am not going to completely throw America away with my benefits that I, um, my, my ancestors left for me. So, um, what I want to, you know, let you know, as I live here, the things that I do to improve my community that I live in now, instead of just coming here and say, oh yeah, I'm saving money, I'm investing, I'm saving, um, you know, everything me, 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 I, I'm, I'm improving, I'm, I'm getting better, but what am I doing for the current community I live in? Well, when I first moved here, I moved in a very white um, retirement community, right? Expat community, everyone spoke English, American gated community, 24 hour security, you know, very much like America, tennis courts, pools, restaurants, you know, all of this stuff. And then I later moved to a more Mexican neighborhood, but it was still gated, but it was more of Mexicans that are well off in the higher income bracket. And so I still had access to all of those really nice things um, and just still staying in my little enclave, you know, just staying in my little, you know, private, um, incubated uh, little, you know, club. And so then I made the decision to move really in the community, in the neighborhood with Mexicans, you know, where there aren't any Americans, where... Uh, everyone does speak Spanish, yeah. Um, and that I lived in a I live in a mixed neighborhood where some people live in trailers, some people live in big houses. So you know, um, I live on a dirt road, and um, 
you know, some of the things I, you know, take pride in doing, you know, I walk my neighborhood, I go to the neighborhood park, I, I shop local, um, I get all of my, I try to find anything that I do, anything I buy, I try to file, find a local vendor um, where I can support, you know, their family. Um, you know, I talk to my neighbors, I, I offer them things. And not that, you know, also we have to be careful because you don't want to be like, oh, it's a charity case, you know, they need my help and, you know, I just need to give them things. You know, my neighbors also um, give me things, you know, so it's a reciprocal relationship where I can learn from them, I can receive from them so that they won't feel like, oh, I'm just here to give them handouts. Um, and so that's been just really, really rewarding. Um, I have helped someone here in Mexico uh, get a job in America, you know, and um, that that was rewarding. And so, you know, I am looking for ways to build my community, make my community better. How can I get more cohesive in my community uh, and make things better? Uh, for where I currently live and not just um, stay really secure and comfortable in my little bubble. And so um, people talk about gentrification. Yes, a lot of people are coming here and able to and willing to pay high prices for um, houses to buy and rent. And I you know, I am against that. I, I don't like that because the local Mexican cannot afford to live in those places. And so it does push them out of there. The place that I live in right now, the area, um, like I said, it's, it's all Mexicans. I haven't seen any uh, Americans around here and the prices are really low where uh, it can actually, you know, match a Mexican you know, person's wage where they can afford to live here. And so um, I choose to not, you know, have maybe all of the American convenience trappings that I had before. Um, I'm not saying that I don't have um, some of those things, but um, I'm definitely okay with adapting to you know, whatever that is. And so I do, um, I am, I'm excited that I am relocating two families um, this month, Black and Baja, to, to Baja. And I have been looking for places for them in Mexican communities. Um, it would be easy for them to Google uh, real estate agents and real estate agencies and find beautiful condos that you know, mimic San Diego and pay still half of what they would, or more than, less than half, wait, more than half, pay, save more than half of what they're paying in San Diego. So it would be a steal, a deal, but I do not want to um, contribute, you know, to um, that, that kind of thing. And so I'm even thoughtful in my business. Um, when I talk to people that want to move here, I'm thoughtful about where I move them as well. Um, and sharing with them, you know, why I choose this area, why I choose that area. And when I'm giving them a tour to show them the different places and, and you know, give them a some information about making the best decisions and how those things, you know, affect, you know, um, the Mexican people. And so, um, yeah, there, there are ways that, you know, as you move to a new place that you can be careful of the footprint that you leave. One of the other things I am really passionate about is, you know, the way you interact and, and how humble you are. Um, and so I, I hear people talk about, you know, different people's experience um, in Mexico and other countries. And um, I always share, you know, that I haven't had a negative experience. And I believe it's because I am really careful and intentional about my African values. 
When I say African values, we share a lot of the values that the Mexican people have, respect, honor for elders, uh, care, love, support, you know, all of those things. I think when we come with our Americanized values and value system, we come with a stench of um, vanity and uh, ego and uh, entitlement and privilege. And you can smell at a mile away. You don't have to say anything. You can just tell the way that people interact. I'll give you an example of when I was in a bakery uh, and someone was ordering. They lived in that neighborhood. I know they did. And they were ordering food and they brought their dog in the bakery. And, you know, the dog was kind of going almost in the kitchen and, um, and they were just like, you know, telling the person their order and, you know, that's it. And just kind of stood there uh, while, meanwhile, I am interacting with the cashier, the hostess and the chefs, you know, having conversation um, because I've learned the language, you know, and I want to know about them. You know, if I've seen them over and over again, I keep going to this, this bakery every weekend for my favorite croissant sandwich. You know, I'm asking about, you know, how's your dog? How's your mom? How's your son? You know, and, and things like that. And she's really building community and relationships. And that's the way that I, I go through life here in Mexico. And so I, I know everybody <laughs> and they know me and they, and we are always having conversations and, um, really being a community, really, really being a neighbor um, and, and authentic and genuine with people. Um, and so that just makes a difference in the way that I'm treated. Um, and so I don't, I don't run into any, any issues uh, because my values align with their values. Um, another example is, you know, I was in a cafe, one of my favorite cafes, and um, they had only stairs and I see an elderly woman come in. They only have stairs to get upstairs to the other tables. All of the tables were full at the bottom. And when she came in, I saw there, you know, she couldn't go up the stairs. I, I, I gave up my table and I, and I offered her and her family to sit at the table I was occupying because she's an elder and she can't get up the stairs and they, they're trying to have dinner, right? And so um, those are the values that, you know, I was raised with and that our people have is in the respect, you know, and, um, you know, I see a lot of instances where, um, you know, I'm not saying that people are like, you know, oh, I see that elderly lady, oh, well, too bad, you know, she can't you know, uh, get up the stairs, but it's just the intentionality and also just the awareness, like that you're aware. Um, some people are just so busy, you know, uh, being self-absorbed into what they're doing, having themselves a good time into their stuff that they're not even paying attention, you know, to other people and their needs. Um, and I, I guess I am a person that is always looking to see where I can improve something, how I can help someone, where can I be of assistance and support. I'm very aware of that. And so I'm very intentional about my impact and my platform, my privilege, the power that I have in different situations. And I aim to utilize all of those things in... Um, the best way possible. So I'm always seeing how I can be of best use uh, to people, the environments that I am in and things like that. And so I think as long as you move through um, your new place of, you know, where you have decided to move from America and long, as long as you move with intentionality and, um, awareness of, of your footprint and, you know, whatever you do. And yeah, I've made, you know, some mistakes and hadn't thought about, oh, you know, I hadn't thought about how that might affect this or that, right? When, when I moved, when I first moved here, I wasn't intentional about where I'm living and 
And I was just enjoying everything that all of my benefits, like, mm, I'm having fun. I got the beach here. You know, I'm, I'm just oblivious to uh, if I'm hurting people, environments, communities, inintentionally, in, inintentionally or inadvertently. But as you learn more and you pay attention um, and you hear stories and you see more and you definitely will if you can if you interact with the community you'll find out more and more they'll share with you the issues and and things like that um, and so let's be gracious um, and uh, help our fellow expats to understand because I think sometimes people are doing things unintentional and inadvertently as well um, and there's some that are just like, forget these people. I'm, I'm here for me. I have no, I, I, it, I, I have no interest in, you know, getting to know these people on a personal level. You know, all I see them as are service workers, some people to serve me. Um, and, you know, we know how that feels, black people, right? That we're only the consumer. We're only the service person that's doing something for someone. We're only known as that. And that's, that's the extent to which people care about us. Like, okay, so you know how that feels. All right, so let's not pass it on. Um, so I hope this video helped you. And I look forward to hearing your stories. I've heard so many great stories in August about families that have made decisions to move and are doing amazing. Kudos to you, Black people. I want to see everybody win. I love you. If you like this uh, video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment and uh, share it. All right. I'll see you later.